Hello, the title of our paper is Automated Repair of Process Models Using Non-Local Constraints. Process mining is a relatively new field in computer science that relates event logs and process models. There are three types of process mining algorithms. Discovery techniques construct process models from event logs generated by information systems. Conformance checking techniques find deviations between real behavior represented as event logs and expected behavior represented as process models. Enhancement techniques take two parameters as input event logs and process models and enhance process models with additional information such as control flow dependencies, data or performance information from event log. In our paper, we consider two types of process mining algorithms. These are discovery and enhancement techniques. Discovery techniques take event logs as input. Event logs can be considered as sets of records, and these records have case IDs that correspond to particular process instances or process executions, event names that correspond to particular events, and timestamps which show when th this event happened. Uh, this event log can be filtered by case IDs, and activity names corresponding to the same case ID can be ordered in accordance with their timestamps. In this case, event log can be considered as a set of sequences. And this set of sequences can be further analyzed, and here we can have a log which corresponds to a loan application process. And run two main cases, two scenarios. The first case, the first trace, uh, is initiated by a client who sends an application to bank, then the bank checks this application, the client is notified, and the application is accepted. The second case is started by the bank or the bank employer who creates this application. Then again, the application is checked, completed by additional information from client, and accepted. Usually commercial process mining tools and widely used um, process mining algorithms construct or uh, directly follow graphs. These directly follow graphs um, consist of nodes that corresponds, correspond to event and arcs that correspond to directly follow relation. For instance, if in our log there is a trace such that send application is directly followed by check application event, then we have to draw an arc from send application node to check application node. Usually, um, these uh, graphs um, support three choice processes, and they do not depend on the previous history because when we check our application, we are free to choose whether we're going to notify the client of a complete application. And in process mining algorithms, these directly follow graphs are converted to free choice petri nets. So here you can see an example of free choice petri nets, petri net constructed from this directly follow graph. And this free choice petri net accepts two additional traces. So for instance, we can complete the application after the application was sent by the client, but this is not supported by the initial process because if the client sends an application, that means that the application is already filled and there is no need to add additional information. So in some cases, it might be feasible to construct more precise model. And the main idea of our approach is to take the skeleton model constructed by a fast uh, discovery algorithm that may, uh, mine only free choice constructs and to enrich it with additional long dependencies. So we have to, to present an enhancement algorithm that take a free choice model discovered by an algorithm and an event log and to enhance this model with additional constraints. First, we have to define the false free choice relation. What is it? So we have our model and we have our event log uh, represented as a transition system. In our free choice model, we have places that correspond to these choices. For instance, we can see here a place which is rounded by green circle. This is a choice place between notify client and complete application tasks. This um, place corresponds to two states in our transition systems, S4 and S5. But 
if we will consider these states, they are not free choice because being in this form means that we can perform notify client, but we can't complete the application. And the other way around, if we are in status five, we cannot notify the client. So actually we are not in a free choice when we in status four and five. And we say that notify client and complete application events are in the free choice, not uh, in the false free choice relation. So we can define in our transition system constructed from event log this free choice, false free choice relation. And then having this free choice relation, we can repair our free choice model with additional constraints. For instance, as presented in this slide, this can be additional places that model long distance dependencies. To discover these places, we use state-based region synthesis technique. So here I will cl quickly recall how do these techniques work and what is the region. So suppose we have a transition system. Uh, region is, is a subset of states of the system such that for each event, all the transitions labeled by this event, all the transitions of the system belong to one and only one group. The first group is group of enter transition. Um, uh, for these transitions, all source places are outside the regions, uh, the region and all target places are inside this region. The second group is group of exit transitions, which are all the way around. So all source states are inside the group and all target places are outside this group. And the third group as, is a group of do not cross transitions. So uh, source and target places of uh, all transitions have to be all inside or outside this region. So here on this slide, you can see how we covered our transition system with regions. Moreover, these regions are minimal, so they do not contain any other regions. And applying this synthesis technique, we can construct a process model from a transition system. But there are two main problems here. The first problem is that this algorithm is computationally very expensive, especially if we deal with real life event logs and transition systems constructed from this event log. The second problem is that it is not always possible to discover a Petri net with the reachability graph isomorphic to the, to, to the initial transition system. There, is some, there are some theoretical results regarding the second problem. So um, there is a theorem which uh, shows uh, two different two conditions that we need to satisfy to be able to synthesize a Petri net with isomorphic reachability graph. The first problem is known as state separation problem. If we have two different states, we have to find a region such that one state belongs to the to this region while while the other doesn't. So this is a state separation problem, and it mainly relates to the minimization problem of corresponding finite state machines. The other problem is known as event state separation problem. This problem is formulated not for two states, but for a state and event. We say that we solve event state separation problem for a state S and event E if we if there are no uh, outgoing transition from S labeled by E and exists a region such that S belongs to this region and E doesn't exit this region. So th these are two problems. And if we're able to solve for all our transition system of these problems, then we will be able to construct a Petri net with isomorphic graph. Now let us consider how this problem um, relates um, to our false free choice relation. So let's go back to our example. And here we have our transition system and here we have our uh, free choice model. And we have these two states, S4 and S5. And these are free choice states, but at the same time for event separation problem is not solved by our free choice net for state S4 and for event complete application. Why? Because there is no such place, or in other words, there is no such region that S4 
belongs to this region and notify client um, and sorry complete application doesn't exit so these two regions highlighted in red here r2 and r3 are not presented within our um within our discovered free choice model so we have to find these constraints these additional regions using synthesis techniques so what is good here that we do not have to apply our synthesis technique to the to all to the whole transition system what we have to do we have to solve two particular properties and of course this makes our problem less complicated so yeah this is how we for instance found this region and the regions and then we can add them as a constraints to our petri net and of course after that we have questions so what will happen to our petri net so what will happen with fitness with the ability of our petri net to replace traces from our event log uh, we have to say that we preserve this property so for each trace from our initial event log if we were able to replace this trace in our model after addition of these places we're still able to replace this place uh, this trace and precision can be only better so precision of the model shows um, shows the share of behavior the model supports that is not presented in the log. So by adding new places, we only restrict our behavior. And that means that we make our model even more precise. We applied and implemented our approach in Appermore framework, uh, Appermore Community Edition. And we tested in on using a set of simple models uh, here you can see an example of such a model, which is not free choice. We uh, generated event logs for these models. Then we removed uh, some of the places to make this uh, models free choice and then applied our technique. And here you can see a plot with dots that represent orange dot that represent repaired model and blue dots that represent free choice models. As far as you can see, precision for, of course, for orange um, models is better, while um, blue models are more simple because they contain less places, so they are more compact. So, of course, there is always a kind of trade-off uh, between simplicity of a model and its precision. Also, we applied our technique uh, to real-life event logs. So here is a fragment of the model discovered from a real-life event log. This event log contained only traces when our application, so this is also an application process, then our application was not accepted. And what we discovered using our algorithm, if it wasn't accepted, then the loop is performed only once. So if it wasn't accepted once, um, on the next step, it will be accepted. And here we discovered using our technique these two additional places r1 f2 uh, that define these constraints also our algorithm can be applied uh, to construct high level process models such as bp man as we know free choice models can be converted to high level flow charts such as bp man uml activity diagram eps diagram and then if we would like to add these constraints, we, for instance, can use a signals. Of course, assuming here that signals, signals work uh, within one process instance. And also we can add uh, data dependencies, which will also model these long distance constraints. So we have developed uh, we have developed an approach that relies on a, a synthesis techniques, but instead of covering the whole transition systems with region, regions, it only solves um, special event state separation problems. So it should work faster, and it works faster than um, region theory applied from the scratch, but at the same time, the problem remains incomplete. Um, thus, in 
future we plan to work on an extension of the proposed algorithm and uh, improve its performance characteristics. Thank you very much for your attention.